Hey guys, it's Penguin here, and welcome back to another gold making video. In today's video, we are going to be discussing everything you need to know about Dragonflight tailoring. Now, I will say that I am a little bit biased because tailoring is always one of my main professions, every single expansion. However, Dragonflight tailoring has so much gold potential. And shout out to all of the alt armies out there. If you are somebody who had an alt army to do garrisons, to do raw gold, or you just like leveling alts, this is the profession for you. We're going to be discussing a way that you can utilize all of those extra alts and actually make a ton of gold without a lot of work. But that's enough of me rambling on and we can get right into this video. As always, feel free to check out my previous Dragonflight tutorials if you haven't seen it already, and also I have already covered two other professions, so feel free to check back at the playlist in the description. Also, these videos are a little bit longer, so grab some coffee, grab some breakfast, grab a snack, even some dinner, and enjoy the video. But everybody, thank you so much for watching, and here we go. Alright, sorry guys, one more thing. This is Future Penguin who is currently editing this video, and I do just want to let you guys know that I do also live stream on Twitch. Currently, I live stream anywhere between three to four days a week. So if you guys are interested in getting your Twitch drops, either the Dragon Kite or the Feldrake coming very soon, or you just want a place to hang out, my Twitch will be in the description down below that you guys can check out. We will be happy to have you and thanks so much. So as always with these breakdowns, let's give a few pros and cons to get you interested and excited about tailoring. Up first and one of the most obvious pros is that tailoring is an armor profession. What that means is if there's any cloth wearer out there who needs crafted gear, tailorers are who they have to go to. So as long as crafted gear for any sort of cloth wearer is in demand, then you will always have things to sell. All of the armor professions have this pro, but tailoring is a great one as well, just because generally it's one of the cheapest. Up next, like I talked in the intro, there is a ton of alt army potential with this profession. Now, I am going to dig deep into that once we get to the recommended build section, but there are two bolt cloth cooldowns that comes from tailoring, and so you can kind of assume what's going on. If you have multiple alts, you can do more cooldowns every single day and gain more materials. You can either sell these materials straight to the auction house or use them in your own crafting. Then lastly, for Dragonflight specifically, tailoring has a ton of non-armor items to sell. Up first, we have bags, which not only are great themselves, we also have the new reagent bag. So everybody, literally, and all of their friends are going to need a reagent bag for their brand new slot, so they will be coming to you to purchase either a decently sized one or even the biggest one available. Also, another exciting thing is that they are bringing back old school spell threads. If you guys are familiar with a few expansions back, if you guys were tailorers, spell threads are the intellect and chance for your leggings that a lot of casters need to have. So these intellect and chance are back and tailorers will be crafting them. Then lastly, for the collectors out there, there are a ton of toys and cosmetics that tailorers can also craft. Moving on, we have two cons, and actually, these cons are not that bad, and honestly, might not even be a con in your standards. The first one is because this is an armor profession, and if you are somebody who is trying to sell that high-level gear, you do have to use the new crafting order system. Now, for most people, this will not be an issue, but if you are somebody who's trying to stay away from that new system and fully rely on the auction house, you really can't do that. There's no way to do that, as all high-end gear is BOP. Up next, once again, not the biggest con, but for people who don't have alt armies, you will likely need to rely on purchasing items from other people. Like I mentioned, there is that daily cooldown and those bolts are used for a lot of high-end crafts. So if you're trying to mass produce those crafts and you can't produce enough bolts yourself, you're going to have to look to the auction house so you can't be very self-sufficient. 
Once again, not everybody will see this as a con. Most people are used to buying materials anyways, but just something to keep in mind. Up next, moving to part two, before we get into the recipes deep dive, let's talk about the requirements for tailoring. Up first, we have reputation, and if you have seen my previous guides, you will be very, very relieved. In terms of the main four factions, you only need two of the reputations. So you will need to farm rep for the Dragon Scale Expedition, as well as the Valdragon Accord. So the other two main factions, you can pretty much leave alone. Now, technically, there is a single recipe that comes from the Artisan's Consortium, as well as a single recipe that comes from the Cobalt Assembly, so technically, you do still have to farm four different reputations, but, you know, it can be up to you and say, is that one recipe really worth it? So, most of your recipes are going to be coming from the Expedition and Accord, but there are a few out there that you can gather from others, which will be on the screen now. In terms of profession equipment, it is a little bit chaotic. Now, once again, because tailoring is a primary profession, tailoring can have three different equipment equipped. It can have one profession tool, as well as two profession accessories. But the first crafting equipment actually comes from tailorers themselves, and this is the dragon cloth tailoring vestments. Now, depending on what you decide to put your knowledge points into, you could definitely produce this for yourself and others, but you can also just simply order it through the crafting order system if you choose not to go this route. The other two items you need is the Kazgarite needle set, which you will have to either make or order from a blacksmith. And then lastly, the final one is the spring-loaded Kazgarite fabric cutters, which comes from engineering. So you will either have to have an engineer and blacksmith to create those yourself, or once again, order it through the crafting order system. And so moving on, let's talk recipes and what tailoring is actually doing. Now, before we break down the high-end recipes, let's talk about the type of materials you're going to be utilizing with this profession. And I'm happy to say that there is not a ton of crazy reagents involved. As you play in the Dragon Isles and you kill mobs, specifically humanoids, you will pick up cloth. There is kind of a few different versions of this cloth, but mainly there is the tattered wilder cloth, as well as the normal wilder cloth. And these will be the backbones of everything you do inside of tailoring. Now, in terms of actual crafting reagents, you will take that cloth, whether it's the tethered version or the regular version, and you will spin it or unravel it into thread. This thread that you create will be one of the main reagents that you use in a lot of crafts. You can think of it like Penumbra Thread from Shadowlands, however, it's an actual crafted item instead of just a vendor one. Moving on, we have five different cloth bolts that will be the main reagent to a lot of tailoring recipes. The most basic version is the wilder cloth bolt, which is just used for all of your basic necessities. Next up, you have your infurious bolt, which is the backbone to all PvP gear. So if you're crafting something that is used for PvP, then you are likely using this type of bolt. Up next, you have the Vibrant Bolt, which is just kind of a better version of the basic one. And then you have those two cooldowns, which is the Chrono Cloth Bolt, as well as the Azure Weave Bolt. Now, these two cooldown bolts are used for your very high-end crafting. There are special sets that go along with each of them that has special set bonuses. And even these bolts are used for high-end bags. But we'll discuss more about these in just a second. Now, with all of that said, let's actually break into game and start looking at everything we can craft. So up first, like I mentioned, we have the basic unraveling technique. What you can do is apply any sort of that picked up cloth and you can spin it into spool thread, which looks like this. This will be one of your main crafting reagents in a lot of recipes. Then you have the five different types of bolts that I just mentioned. You have your most basic version. You kind of have your PVP version. 
your, you know, intermediate version as well as your two high-end, cool-down, very high-end version. Moving on, we do have a handful of optional reagents, which will just add a few abilities, as well as the finishing reagents, which you can apply to items to make your crafting experience a little bit easier. If you want to know more about how these work, as well as the skill system, I highly recommend checking out my quality system video, which is the first of this Dragonflight series. Moving on, getting into the interesting stuff, we have the three main sets of armor. Starting from the bottom, we kind of have the basic crafting level gear. You can apply different sorts of item level adjustments and missives to them, but this is kind of your basic starter gear. Of course, the item level can change a little bit depending on your quality bonuses, but this overall is a very basic set of gear. Moving on, we have the Crimson Combatant, and there you go, you see that special cloth, so automatically you know this is PvP gear. Hovering over, as you can see, if you equipped it in arenas and battlegrounds, you will have an increased item level, so right there, you know, it's a PvP piece of gear. Lastly, you have the kind of generic mythic quality set. Remember that I just said generic, and this requires, once again, some thread, some vibrant bolts, and of course, some BOP materials. Now, like I mentioned before, depending on what sort of optional reagents and embellishments you add, this item level may be a little bit different, but this is just overall your basic mythic quality set. Continuing on, here is where we get to the specialized mythic quality set. Now, keep in mind, remember the Azure Weave as well as the Chrono Cloth relates back to those special bolts which are tied to cooldowns. Up first, we have the Azure Weave set, and you will notice these all have very special abilities. I'm not going to go through exactly what they do right here, but you can always pause and check them if you want. Keep in mind, as you can see, this one is uniquely equipped, so, you know, they are a little bit more special. Besides that, you have your basic Azure Weave set, which is actually the set with the set bonuses, so if you have the set, you can get those set bonuses. Once again, some other special items. Then lastly, once again, highlighted by the fact that it utilizes this bolt, this is once again a high-end PvP piece of gear. Right here, it increases the item level to 424 in arenas and battlegrounds. Now this same sort of concept goes with Chrono Cloth. However, they just have different abilities and of course, uses the different type of bolts. So you kind of have these unique, you know, two sets of versions. Then you have the overall just generic Chrono Cloth set that has a set bonus. Then lastly, you have this special PvP version that you can use as well. Moving on, we have profession tools and equipment. And you will notice that tailoring has a ton of them. And to anybody interested in these sorts of markets, the good news is, is that you are actually going to be supplying six different professions with their best in slot equipment. You'll notice they're all sort of gear related, which makes sense because you're an armor profession, but you will be providing gear to tailorers, alchemists, cooks, enchanters, fishermen, as well as herbalists. Now, of course, these are the best in slot versions. Then you have your more generic BOE versions that you can sell simply on the auction house. Moving on, we're almost done, but we have these three different types of spell thread. Remember, these are the intellect enchants for your leggings. However, depending on the version you craft, they may have a few extra bonuses. Then we have the bags, which is the most exciting part for some people. And we have two different categories. Up first, we have our reagent bags, which is the new bag slot, which a lot of people are going to want. The more basic version, as you can see, requires very basic reagents, is a 32 slot reagent bag. The step up from that is a 36 slot reagent bag, but look at that right here. It requires six chrono cloth bolts. Once again, those are tied to cooldowns. In terms of the normal bag, you just have the simple bag right here, which is a 32 slot 
nothing super special. However, you do have the upgraded version. Once again, look at the bolt it is using, and this is a 34 slot. So a lot of people will want their hands on this item. Then lastly, we just have our groups of a lot of different toys, a lot of different just kind of random cosmetic things that people will want to finish out their collections, and we do have these cool new banners. These banners are for either herbalist or miners, and they actually give themselves some gathering stat bonuses. So if you are an herbalist or a miner, you will likely want to use some of these, so these could be a very good market. Now, lastly, I do want to highlight this experiments category. Now, these are not actually listed at the trainer, and you don't learn them until you max out your tailoring. So, not a lot of people, or it's going to take a while, I should say, for people to unlock these, but I really don't know why they did this. If you guys see a reasoning behind this that I don't, feel free to let me know, but what this does is utilizes two different profession equipments and creates you daggers. Now that's right, you're going to get daggers for your item and you know, half the time, unless you're a rogue tailor, you're not going to use these. Also keep in mind, they're soulbound. Now you have the draconium version, which if you do wanna look at what they look like, they do kind of have a cool appearance, but as a monk, I can't use them. And then there's the kind of upgraded version, which is the Kazgurite version. However, the second blade is actually a offhand. So once again, I'm not sure the point of these items. They look cool, but I don't see a lot of people using them. But let me know if I'm missing something. But that is all the recipes for tailoring, and we'll move on to leveling. And good news is, to level up tailoring, I think this will be one of the cheapest professions to level. Basically, the only requirement will be cloth, which of course means, you know, how expensive it is is directly related to the cloth price, but generally, this is going to be a very cheap and easy profession to level. Now, as always, keep in mind that these exact paths may change, so look at the spreadsheet in the description to always have the most updated version, especially if you're watching this video in the future. Now, in terms of only leveling with trainer learned recipes, you will be able to reach 65 out of 100 skill. This is awesome because you're going to be able to unlock two of your profession trees as you will be over that 50 out of 100 threshold, meaning you can unlock two of your profession trees and start putting points in. Now, following the path that I have on screen, if you follow that exact one, not only will you max out at 65, you will also gain about 15 knowledge points following that route. 15 knowledge points is not a whole bunch, but that is a pretty great start, especially for a cheap leveling path. Feel free to branch out and craft whatever else you want to gain a few more points. And there we go. We have covered all of the basics, everything you need to know about tailoring, but let's talk recommended specialization builds. Now, I have about four different suggestions, so bear with me, but let's start with the most exciting one for all of the alt army people out there. So, tailoring is a little bit more advanced, most armor professions are, and actually has four different specialization trees to your name. Now, one thing, a disclaimer I will say, at the end of the day, you will be able to max out all of these trees. So you do not have to, you know, only pick one path, you can mix and match, you can put points wherever you want. By the time Dragonflight ends, you will have every single thing unlocked. Also, another good point a lot of people are asking, and I apologize for not covering it much in these videos, but once you apply a point, that point is permanent. For example, as you can see for these videos, I actually have some applied knowledge already. So in a perfect scenario, I would want a blank tree so I don't confuse you guys, but I actually can't get rid of these points because it's permanent and that's how it's going to be in live. So be very careful where you put points, as if you make a mistake, it could end up hurting you. And so build number one is going to be the cooldown maniac, 
we are going to be prioritizing crafting these two types of bolts and getting those cooldowns done so you can actually produce a ton of items. So what you will want to do is spec into the Draconic Needlework Tree. Now this is how simple this alt system is. As soon as you unlock this tree, you have not even put a single point in, you have just unlocked the tree, you will have the ability to choose a sub-spec. Which your options are, is either Azure Weave, which is going to unlock that Azure Weave cooldown, or you're going to unlock Chrono Cloth. Once again, you're going to unlock that Chrono Cloth cooldown. So as a brand new tailor, as long as you reach level 25 in your skill, because at level 25 you unlock specializations, you go to here, select the Draconic Needlework Tree, you will immediately be able to choose a daily cooldown. And so let's say you choose Azure Weave, on that character you can start producing Azure Weave Bolts every single day. And you can kind of see how this alt army system is going to work. So let's say you have 10 side alts, you're not exactly sure what to do with them, all you have to do on every single alt is level up your tailoring to 25, which should be relatively cheap, go into the system, choose this tree, and immediately pick a cooldown. You know, if you have 10 characters, you will probably pick 5 to go the Azure Weave route, and 5 to go the Chrono Cloth route, and you are good to go. Now to take this a step further, as you can see right here, if you decide to put 30 points into this main tree, you will be able to unlock both sub-specs. So, you know, on an alt, if you decide to grind out a few knowledge points, put 30 in, you'll be able to unlock both sides of the tree. However, if you have a ton of alts, what I recommend doing is, let's say you have 10 alts, right? So you have five in the blue path and five in the orange path. I recommend putting your points into this path. So if we decide to start putting points into Azure Weave Tailoring, we're going to improve our crafting ability of these bolts. We're even going to unlock some recipes, but right here at point 15, we're going to be able to continue the tree. So keep in mind, if you level up your tailoring, you're going to gain 15 points. So right there, you can immediately unlock 15 points and learn this final subspec. What this will do is improve your connection and decrease how long it takes you for your daily cooldown. Which, at the end of the day, means you'll be able to produce bolts way more quickly. And if you can get your hands on 20 more points, keep in mind we've put 15 into here, we will need 20 into here, so you can max this out at 35 points, you will be able to improve your multicraft, improve your skill, multicraft, and yet again, decrease the time of your cooldown even more. And so, you know, if you do this on all of your characters, you are going to have a money-making machine. Now, of course, these bolts are important because of the mythic quality gear, but remember, these bolts are used for bags. So if people want these reagent bags, which people are going to want, that is six bolts. On one character, that is six daily cooldowns, which is ridiculously long to wait. So if you can speed up this process, whether you ultimately use the bolts yourself or you sell them on the auction house, you will likely make a lot of gold. Now, of course, you don't necessarily have to do this on an alt. You can do it on your main character and spec out this tree, but that is the way you want to do it. Up next, we have build number two. And this is going to be the farmer build. So let's say you're somebody who is going to do open world farms. You're looting a lot of humanoids for whatever reason. This is the build for you. What you're going to want to do is unlock the tailoring mastery tree. And you will need to put 10 points into this original sub spec. Right here, sorry, I accidentally put an 11. Misclick here. I can actually undo that and fix it. There we go you can unlock your first sub-specialization. What you will want to do is go in to Cloth Collection. Immediately upon learning this, you will learn the ability to sometimes collect those untethered versions of Wilder Cloth. So you'll be gathering a lot more of the normal cloth, which will be worth a lot more gold. And 
Thankfully, this tree is super simple, as you're just going to max it all the way out. So just shove all 50 points into this tree. As you do that, you're going to gain more and more cloth as you kill humanoids. Every single tier of this is basically an additional 10%, so this will add up quickly. Right here is even a 20% bonus, and once you get to the final one, you will even be able to actually loot the bolts off of humanoids as well. So once again, if you are somebody who is going to be doing a lot of open world farming, you know, you might not be doing so much crafting, but you just, you know, picked up tailoring because you really don't know what else you wanted to pick up, this could be great for the farmers out there. Now this seems pretty simple, but remember what I said during the leveling section of this video. Whenever you are leveling and if you max it out to 65, you will be able to unlock two specialization trees. So if you are somebody who picks this build, remember that you have only unlocked one tree. Remember what we talked about in that first build? You can do that here as well. So utilize that second tree unlock and pick Draconic Needlework. Once you unlock this tree, remember you instantly get to learn a sub-spec, meaning no more additional knowledge points are needed, and you can instantly choose a daily cooldown. So not only are you going to be farming and gaining some additional cloth, this character will also have a daily cooldown and producing you even more gold. So make sure to utilize all of these different trees and pump out that gold making. And alright, Moving on, we have our third build, which a lot of people are going to be focusing on, which is the Armorer. Now, sadly, I will say theory crafters are still working on, you know, figuring out what the best gear is for everybody, so I can't sit here and say, hey, cloth pants are going to be in demand, and cloth helmets are going to be best in slot. I can't say that just yet, but keep an eye on Wowhead, keep an eye on information, you know, we will get that information probably closer to release, but just keep that in mind. Now, ultimately, whatever item does become the most in demand, how to unlock that is generally really simple. You're going to want to unlock the garment crafting tree, and you will need to put five points into the main tier system. At that, you can choose a sub-spec. Now you will realize there is basically a sub-spec, for every single piece of armor. So if you are somebody who is looking for bracers, you will have to spec into the embellishment tree. Then you will have to put 10 points into here to finally get to armbands. You know, for the scenario that I have on this character, I went down to outfits because outfits has the ability to unlock the dragon cloth tailoring vestments, which is that best in slot tailoring gear that you need. And because I put in 10 points, I get to choose a sub-spec. So I could also prioritize robes if I wanted, or pants. But generally this system works the same. You're going to have to put 5 points in to choose your first sub-spec. Then whatever sort of sub-spec you choose, you gotta put in 10 more points to get to the final outer rim. Now once you ultimately make a decision and learn whatever item you're looking for, there are kind of three main points. The first one is you actually unlock the recipe, pretty simple. The second one is that you are going to gain skill when crafting that specific armor. And then lastly, you're going to be able to use finishing reagents to help you craft better quality of that specific piece. So once again, this is pretty standard. You as a crafter has the decision, okay, do I just, you know, spread my points around and unlock the basic version of each gear set, or do I really dive deep into ropes? I can't answer that question for you, I apologize, but this is kind of how the system works. If you guys are interested in exactly what you unlock in each version of these trees, I will leave the wowhead calculator in the description down below to make sure you can utilize and actually see this if you don't have beta. And once again, I swear I'm not trying to repeat myself, but remember, if you max your skill out to over 50, you can choose another tree to unlock. So once again, even if you decide to unlock robes in this case, go and unlock the daily cooldown. Once again, it requires no additional knowledge points, and you might as well start unlocking those. 
Of course, if you don't want to do the daily cooldown, you can throw your points into mastery, gain some extra skill, or whatever you want to do. But keep in mind, you can unlock multiple trees. And this lastly comes to our fourth build, which is kind of our reagent crafter. Now, this kind of works as a very good, you know, sub build, right? So this is really good if you are trying to pair this with others, but you will want to unlock the textiles tree. Once you do this, you will need to put five points in as this will unlock a sub spec, and then you have two different options. What I recommend is either putting your points into spinning or into weaving. I would suggest spinning, but it's up to you. Once you learn either of these, let's just say spinning for the time being, at this point, you're going to be able to extract rousing elements from those specific types of wild cloth. Now, I mentioned the ability to unravel different types of cloth into spool. However, there's different types of tethered versions. So for example, if I, you know, unravel the frost bitten wilder cloth with this skill unlocked, I will have the chance of actually gaining rousing frost from this process as well. So that it just increases the gold you can make by unraveling and creating reagents. As you continue to put in more points, as you can see, you'll gain different stat bonuses. So resourcefulness, skill, crafting speed, skill, resourcefulness, and finally, you will gain the ability to guarantee arousing from this process. So once again, this just increases your gold making potential from creating thread and also reduces your crafting cost. Now, whether you decide to put points into this tree or not, at the next milestone, which would be 15 points in, so applying 10 more points to the middle, you will be able to unlock weaving. Keep in mind, you could do this in the opposite order if you want. With this weaving tree, you'll be able to produce a lot more bolts at a cheaper crafting cost. For example, right here, you gain a lot of multi-craft, hoping to proc more bolts per cloth you're using. You will gain inspiration to make higher quality versions, multi-craft, inspiration, and lastly, a huge bonus of multi-craft. And so, to just sum it up, you know, bolts and this spool is the foundation of tailoring, so if you can produce them at a cheaper rate, and of course improve their quality, that can be awesome for all crafters. Once again, if you decide to go this tree, stick your points into draconic needlework and unlock a daily cooldown on your character as well. But there we go guys, that is my mini movie about tailoring. I don't know if you guys can tell, but I'm super excited about this profession. I'm ready to go crazy, but let me know how you think about tailoring. Do you think it's going to actually be good? Are you not very impressed? And ultimately, are you going to pick up this profession in Dragonflight? As always, everybody, I really do appreciate you guys taking the time to watch my videos and staying here until the end if you made it this far. But everybody, thank you so much and have a good day.